The next part that we're going to cover is going to be the monthly maintenance of our microscope. So we're going to start with cleaning our non-optical surfaces. For the non-optical surfaces, you can use a uh, water solution that is has a little bit of mild soap in it, mild cleanser, or you can use Sani wipes if you have those available in your clinic. What we're not going to use, we're not gonna use Lysol wipes, we're not going to use Clorox wipes or off brands of those. Those are just too corrosive, too harm, harmful to the microscope. So we're gonna use our Sani wipes, which we know the consistency of, or a soap and water solution. So we're gonna clean our microscope from the top down again and I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm gonna get a little bit of my soapy solution onto the paper towel and I'm going to wipe down my microscope with my soapy water solution. I'm just getting all the spots of the microscope that we touch regularly. I'm gonna get off any fingerprints or dust. Now, when you get around to cleaning the back side of the microscope, you wanna avoid getting any moisture here into the USB port and also avoid getting it into the power port. That could probably damage our microscope. So I'm gonna keep cleaning here. I'm gonna get a little bit more of my solution. And I'm just gonna keep cleaning. Now, while I am cleaning this as part of the monthly maintenance, if you get any spills onto your microscope, like KOH or saline, or even, you know, if you have a little bit of splash off of your slide, you're gonna wanna clean that up immediately because that those can be corrosive and that can damage some parts of our microscope. So you will have to clean as part of your monthly maintenance, but if you see that, go ahead and clean it up immediately. All right, now that I have done a pretty good job of wiping down all of the non-optical surfaces, I'm going to take a dry paper towel again, and I'm going to um, use some fresh water here that has no soap in it, and I'm going to get all the soapy residue off my microscope wiping in all the same places that I just wiped, but still avoiding those power ports. If there's any moisture left, we can use a dry paper towel and just dry off our surfaces. Okay. That looks pretty good. The next thing that we're gonna do as part of our monthly maintenance is we're gonna check our supplies. So here I have my bottle of KOH and saline. And we're gonna check to see if we have any contamination or cloudiness or flakes in our bottles. So the easiest thing to do is just gonna be to give it a little swirl and then I'm going to hold it up to the light and see if I can see any cloudiness or flakes or any chunks, hopefully not, but I'm gonna draw a little bit up into the dropper and then I'm also gonna hold that up to the light. This one looks good. So this one looks like it's still good to use. Now I'm gonna, I have my KOH bottle here, my potassium hydroxide. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a swirl and then I'm gonna hold it up to the light. And oh goodness, that one looks like it's got some flakiness and cloudiness in it. 
And if I open it up and look at it, I can definitely see some cloudiness in the dropper too. So now this one was made in October and for that has not been a year from today when we are recording. So we're gonna have to replace this solution even though we still have time left on our working expiration date. So sometimes you may find that your solutions don't last a year and you will have to replace them before then. The other thing that you're gonna wanna look for is around the edge, the threads of the bottle. See if you can see any chunky stuff around the threads of the bottle. And if you can, and that's the only problem, then take a wet paper towel and just wipe around the edges to get that off. And you can do that with the saline and the KOH. I think that generally happens more with the saline bottle. Okay, so I'm gonna need to replace this. Also, you will need to make sure that when you do replace the solution in your KOH bottle that you put a new label on the front of it that is properly labeled with all of the information that the bottle needs to have. Uh, another supply that you're gonna need to check is going to be your pH paper. I don't have any pH paper, we don't keep it at the lab, but you're gonna need to check your pH paper for appearance, like its visual changes, and also function if you have concerns about color changes. So you're gonna need to kinda know what the pH paper came in, what color it came in with, and if that has changed, which can sometimes happen with our humid uh, environment, then you would probably be good to check the function of the paper. So, and the way that you can check the function is to take your KOH or your saline bottles and to put a drop on your pH paper and see if it does change like you expect it to. So potassium hydroxide is very basic. It's going to be probably between 10 and 13 on the pH scale. And your pH paper probably tops out at seven. So this is going to be way past the upper end of your scale and it's gonna be pretty far off. So with the saline, saline's probably going to be between uh, five to seven, slightly acidic, and that may be something that your paper that you have within the range on your paper. So you can expect to see it between five and seven. If you don't get those, um, if you don't get those ranges that we're talking about here, then you may wanna think about changing your pH paper out. Okay, now, now that we've checked all of our supplies and we've cleaned our non-optical surfaces of our microscope, we're gonna take our microscope maintenance chart and down here at the bottom, we have the section for the monthly maintenance. So I'm gonna go to the month that we are in right now, and I'm which is June, and I'm going to check off that I cleaned the non-optical surfaces of the microscope. I checked my KOH solution for contamination and cloudiness, check. And I checked my saline for contamination and cloudiness, check. And then I checked my pH paper for color changes, check. Then I'm going to put today's date and my initials at the bottom. We ask that you do your monthly maintenance around the same time each month, uh, just so that it can be cleaned regularly. That's not as big of a deal, but what we don't wanna see is that you did the ma monthly maintenance on the last day of last month and the first day of this month, because that's not going to be cleaning the microscope regularly. The last part of maintenance that we're going to talk about is going to be our annual cleaning. Now, your annual cleaning has in the past been done probably by Mr. Likens with Prime Optics. And these microscopes are covered for two years as part of what we wrote into the grant. So they are covered by the vendor that sold us the microscopes and that is Delta Optical. So the first year of cleaning and maintenance has already been done on these microscopes and it was done when they were put together at the state laboratory. And the next year, so 2020, they will be cleaned around the same time by someone from Delta Optical. Someone will come to your health department and they will clean the microscope on site. Now they will only be cleaning this microscope. So if you choose to keep one of the microscopes that you have now, then Mr. Likens will still come clean that microscope next year. And then in 2021, we will have somebody clean all of them together, the new and the other ones that you decided to keep. 
Now, um, also included in the grant and as part of the service package, the uh, Delta Optical technicians will help us with any problems that we're having with these microscopes. Um, but if we can fix the problems ourselves, then we're gonna try to do that first. So if you have a problem with your microscope that you just can't get, please call a technical consultant with QM first before you call the uh, Delta optical technician. Okay, then once you have gotten like, next year, the current year's cleaning annual maintenance has already been put here on the paper, but next year, you will have to denote that just like you've had to do in the past. You'll have to write the current year cleaning in this spot here. And the previous year's cleaning would be 2019 and it would go in this spot that's currently filled with NA on next year's sheet. All right, well that covers video three, the cleaning of the Nikon Eclipse E100. Uh, our video four is going to cover the use of the telehealth cart with the Nikon Eclipse E100.